instead of just letting it lie around or folding it up and never reading it. If that's going to be the case, so leave it for somebody else. These are not normal things that you find in any bookstore. These are things that are that are spiritual teachings that I want you to be able to at least read and think about. And if you want, write to me. Um, Queens? Okay, we'll just, we'll just let's continue and then we'll pick up a little later. Okay, so this is um, a very useful thing that I was able to make once. Hashem's name. It's um, not usually seen in a vertical array, usually seen on a page. God's name is spelled Yod K Vav K. And then we don't even say this name. We only say the name that's here in the bottom. Aleph Dalit Nun Yud, which means Lord, Master, Director. But that Lord, Master, Director, that concept that there's a director who directs the events of history, that directs the events of our lives as an author. It's a very interesting concept. But that's the bottom of a ladder. This can become the gate to a pathway that leads up to a great palace. And in that palace we have access, through entering that palace, that temple at the top of the mountain, we access the two higher levels that are up here. And then we come back down into the lower levels, right back here where we all live. Huh. And so whenever you see God's name in a, in a sidur, in a prayer book or whatever, it's like what we call it an opening to eternity. It's a connection with our source. Because this is the source of the fact that we have a concept called the five levels of the soul. The names of them are from the bottom up, Nefesh Ruach Neshama, Chaya Yechida. Kabbalists, just like physicists, like to use initials and make acrostics. The acrostic for this is taking the initial of each word and calling it Narnechi. Narnechi. The Ashkenazim call it Naran Chai. They're both correct. The, the idea being it's just an acrostic, has no word, no meaning of its own. Nefesh Ruach Neshama Yehida. The names are significant, what they mean. There's a lot of meaning embedded in Hebrew names and Hebrew words. They make a point by saying they're not synonymous. It's not like they're two words for the same thing. There's a hierarchical structure here. The nefesh is that lower extremity of the soul that we've been talking about. And even nefesh has narnechi of nefesh. In other words, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a multiple system. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, um, a holographic system, or even the detail, the detail itself, what happened? Somebody smoke? Yeah, smoke. Where? The summer's on fire. Okay. Mm -hmm. So even the detail contains within, within itself the, the the essence, the microcosm. It is a microcosm of the whole, but from its particular vantage point. Again, like we said before, each one of us is a world, is a temple, a complete miniature of the universe, and yet each one of us is a little piece, a little part of a great temple of consciousness of humankind, of Am Yisrael, and of ultimately the universe. We are the, the receiving station right, for godliness. And it's all of us together. Not, uh, not, there's no one person. There's no one person. Even the Mashiach is not just a teacher, the Mashiach is a lightning rod who will then allow all of us to participate in this concept called Mashiach. It's not a human being. That would be a human being who will attain a certain level, but because that human being has attained that level, it will then flow to all of us. That's why Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah said, No man will teach his brother or his friend, saying, Da et Adonai, saying, No God. Ki kulam yidu oti miktana viyad gedolam, for all will know me from the small to the great. So, 
And it should say from the great to the small, and that's an explanation, but for the moment I'm not getting to that. And ultimately, Isaiah, Yeshaya said, Kemayim liyam nechassim, and the consciousness of God will fill, will permeate the physical reality, like the waters fill the sea. These are beautiful ideas, beautiful things that are part of our tradition. That there's going to be an, a quantum leap in consciousness where the lower levels are going to be lifted up, back up to the higher levels. Right now, our job is to bring as much as we can down into the physical. As the Ari, Rabbi Yitzhak Luria, we mentioned in the beginning, he says, the light of the soul permeates the inner, the inner pipelines of our bodies and also surrounds us and encompasses us. The light from the outside permeates us from the outside. The light from the inside permeates us from the inside until eventually the physical matter of our bodies will be permeated from the inside, permeated from the outside, and become truly energized. That's a beautiful concept, that we're being energized from the inside into the out. This five-level system of soul corresponds to the five levels of universe. That, that we speak about in the Kabbalistic system. Again, all of them rooting back into the five levels of God's name. We didn't explain it. We're not, we're not, this is not the time for explanations, but the fact that there's four letters here, but with what's called the apex of the Yud. This is the Yud. So the apex of the Yud is considered a level above all the others. The, more, the higher you go, the more inclusive they become, so that everything that eventually unfolds down here is up here still. It's already up here. In, in microcosmic form, in DNA sense. And it's even more so even here. So the idea that there's less, less space taken up here by this than this means that it's more infinite. This is an interesting way to look at things. But this, the, the concept of five can be gone into. A whole book can be wrote, written about why Judaism is into very the depths of numbers. And so one of them is the expression of the five worlds, the five dimensions. And sometimes they are seen as actually a building of many stories, right? <coughs> but sometimes they are seen in other forms, and there's no one way to see them. My favorite ones are these two. One is that the higher levels also interpenetrate and come down and become the inner filament of the lower levels. So that when we look at something from the outside, we look at ourselves from the outside, we see only the outside, but the inside the level is there. In the sense that you can see two people eating, right? They're both eating. But one is eating with thought, and the other is eating thoughtlessly and mindlessly. Aha! Uh -huh. Well... It's hard to eat mindfully. It's hard. Brachot, blessings, were given to us that we say blessings before and after our food in order that we become mindful. We be, it's good to close your eyes when you're chewing your food. To really become aware of the incredible miracle of eating, of food intake, of the actual chewing process, the saliva, the teeth, and then the swallowing. And to, and to chew your food more than you usually do. And that's a, it's, a, it's an effort for some of us. And then to know that within our bodies, the digestive system is unpackaging the food and sending the nutrients to all parts of our bodies, including our hearts and our minds. There's an incredible process here. We're a processing plant. And the, the most spiritual aspects of the food are sent up, so to speak, to the heavenly realms where they all came. We're processing physical reality and sending it back up. We're elevating reality. So this idea that the inside level can be, the outside level can become more transparent when we refine ourselves, when we become more mindful that we're not just physical beings, that we can become more spiritual, again, not as a contradiction to our physicality, but become more beautiful in our physicality. That's what Shabbat is all about. It's the physical world, but it's now elevated above its normal mundane level.